April 13, 2008, a date forever etched in the hearts of Chinese Canadians. It was a day of awakening, a day of unity, a day when we stood together, a sea of red and white, to let our voices be heard. The world watched as we, the often silent minority, raised our voices in defense of our motherland. We would not be silenced, we would be heard. The spark had been ignited weeks earlier. Images of unrest in Tibet flooded our television screens. The Western media painted a picture of chaos and oppression, but something didn't feel right. The narrative felt incomplete, biased. We knew the truth. This was not about Tibetan independence. This was about China's sovereignty. This was about our dignity. As Chinese Canadians, we felt a deep sense of responsibility. We had a duty to speak out against injustice. We had a duty to correct the narrative. And so, from Vancouver to Halifax, a movement began to stir. A movement fueled by a love for our heritage and a desire for truth. The response was overwhelming, from bustling metropolises like Toronto and Vancouver to smaller communities like Waterloo and London, Chinese Canadians rallied to the cause. The logistics were daunting. How do you mobilize thousands of people scattered across a vast country? The answer was simple through the power of shared purpose and the invisible threads that bound us together as a community. Word spread like wildfire through Chinese language newspapers, radio stations and the internet. Social media platforms still in their infancy became vital tools for communication and organization. Volunteers worked tirelessly coordinating bus transportation, designing banners and spreading the word. The energy was electric. A shared sense of purpose united us, transcending geographical boundaries and generational divides. From Halifax to Victoria, carpools were organized. Families pooled their resources to rent buses. Students skipped classes and shopkeepers closed their stores. Nothing could deter us. We were determined to make our voices heard in the nation's capital. This was not a movement orchestrated by politicians or celebrities. It was a grassroots uprising, fueled by the passion of ordinary individuals. Individuals like Wang Jiaming, a retired engineer from Montreal, who had never participated in a protest before. Driven by a deep sense of patriotism, he spent countless hours on the phone coordinating bus transportation from Montreal to Ottawa. Then there was Xu Zhonghua, a young university student from Waterloo, who created a website dedicated to the rally. With limited resources and technical expertise, she single-handedly built a platform that connected thousands of Chinese Canadians providing them with information, updates, and a sense of shared purpose. These were just two of the countless unsung heroes who emerged from our community. They were not driven by fame or fortune, but by a deep love for their heritage and a desire to see justice served. Their dedication and selflessness were an inspiration to us all. Section 4, Against the Odds. The challenges were immense. Securing permits for such a large gathering was just the beginning. We faced logistical nightmares, from finding enough buses to transport participants to ensuring everyone had access to food and water. At one point, it seemed like we might not have enough buses to accommodate everyone who wanted to attend, but we refused to give up. Community leaders reached out to bus companies across the country, pleading our case. In a testament to the spirit of solidarity, Many companies offered their services at reduced rates or even free of charge. Individuals who owned vans and SUVs volunteered to transport their fellow community members. The obstacles seemed insurmountable, yet we overcame them one by one through sheer determination and the unwavering belief in our cause. The financial burden was significant. Many participants were students or working class families and the cost of transportation, food and accommodation was a major concern. And once again, the community came together. Donations poured in from individuals and businesses, both large and small. Every dollar contributed was a testament to the collective spirit that fueled our movement. Section five, a sea of red and white. The day of the rally dawned bright and clear as we arrived in Ottawa. Buses from across the country converged on the city, their arrival greeted by cheers and applause. The atmosphere was electric. 
a mixture of anticipation and excitement. Looking around, I saw faces filled with a mixture of emotions, pride, determination, and a hint of defiance. We were here to make our voices heard. The rally took place on Parliament Hill, the heart of Canadian democracy. As we gathered, the crowd swelled into a sea of red and white, a visual representation of our dual identities as both Chinese and Canadian. The air crackled with energy as we waited for the speeches to begin. Banners fluttered in the wind, bearing slogans like Stop Tibet Independence, Support China's Unity and We Love Peace. The speeches were powerful and moving. Speaker after speaker shared their stories their voices trembling with emotion as they spoke of their love for China and their anger at the Western media's biased reporting. They spoke of the importance of unity and the need to stand up for what is right.